When I think about movies today, most of them feel very artificial. Everything has become digitized. Every aspect of them has become artificial. I see artificial bodies walking through artificial cities. I see artificial weather blanketing places that that never have and never will exist. I see living, breathing actors sharing screen space with characters created by computers. This is one of the reasons why Aguirre, The Wrath of God, had such an impact on me when I first saw it back in 2001. This is a film made on a startling visual scale and filled with grand ideas and haunting imagery. If you like an example, look no further than the film's jaw-dropping opening shot. Here, we see a mountain covered in mist and a long line of men slowly snaking their way down the steep path of this mountain to the valley below. The scope of this endeavor makes the men look more like tiny insects rather than mighty explorers. But again, this is really happening. There's no trickery here. There's no optical effects going on. How did they do that? Why would they do that? What director is insane enough to put people's lives in danger all for the sake of a film? In answering these questions, I want to go back and examine one of the greatest and perhaps craziest films ever made, Aguirre, The Wrath of God. Aguirre tells the story of a doomed Spanish expedition into the Amazon. The expedition is searching for the fabled city of gold, El Dorado. Now, even though this film is inspired by actual events, this is not some historical docudrama. Aguirre is a film about madness, about man's futile struggle against both God and nature. In order to understand the film better, I think we should first set up a point of contrast with similar type films. Come on, man! Traditionally, Western films have always celebrated the idea of conquest. The conquest of nature, the conquest of natives, and the triumph of man's strength over nature. Western cinema is filled with stories of heroic individuals who set out into the unknown and conquer the unknown. This is not the case with Aguirre. Here, the Spanish Empire's conquest of the Americas is more of a farce than an adventure. Aguirre is a movie about the limitations of man and the indifference of nature towards the small and fragile human will. The main character in Aguirre is played by actor Klaus Kinski, and he plays his character as a complete and total madman. Early on in the film, Aguirre renounces the King of Spain and forces his crew to journey up river and look for the fabled city of El Dorado deep in the jungle. He even kills anyone who doesn't go along with his mutiny. Of course, the city of El Dorado does not exist, and the whole expedition is doomed from the start. The visual structure of this film emphasizes the power and vastness of the rainforest around them. Look at the details of this scene. We see Aguirre's troops struggle inch by inch through this dense jungle. But look at how they're dressed. They're dressed as if they're attending some grand royal banquet instead of an expedition into the Amazon rainforest. The group is attempting to take all the trappings of empire with them, only to realize how worthless these trappings are in their current setting of the jungle. One of the more surreal moments in this film entails Aguirre forcing his crew to build this rickety raft out of trees and vines, and then set out on the river to find the infamous City of Gold. The raft becomes a kind of floating kingdom where Aguirre rules over his men with an iron fist. What's strange about this is, Aguirre is determined to succeed in his mission, even though his entire crew dies around him one by one. 
The movie's final shot is a wonder to behold. Aguirre's pseudo-kingdom has now been overrun by an army of monkeys, and Aguirre himself has descended into such a state of madness that he claims to be the wrath of God. So unlike other movies about man and empire conquering nature, overcoming nature, here we see the direct opposite. It is nature that has conquered man. The film's director, Werner Herzog, was one of a group of German directors who, along with people like Rainer Fassbender and Wim Wenders, were helping to revitalize German cinema and make it a force within international film markets. Herzog's films center around obsessive heroes who want to fulfill these impossible dreams. Like his film's characters, Herzog is a director known for going to elaborate, even dangerous ends in order to visualize his films. One of his earlier works was a truly bizarre film called Even Dwarves Started Small. The film is made up of a cast of little people. The movie is about these little people who are trying in vain to revolt against every man-made thing in the world. The making of Aguirre has become the stuff of movie legend. Like the character of Aguirre, Herzog took his film crew into the jungles of Peru, and, like the characters in the movie, the filmmakers slowly started to go mad. One of the reasons why the scenes on the river look so realistic is because the filmmakers actually rode the treacherous Amazon River rapids on rafts built by natives. Kinski and Herzog were at each other's throats for most of the movie. Uh, in one famous incident, Kinski fired a gun at a group of extras on the set, blowing the tip off one of the extras' fingers. Subsequently, the tension between the two men, Kinski and Herzog, will culminate in a now infamous incident in which, after one scene, Kinski stormed off the set of the film, refusing to act. It was then when Herzog allegedly pulled a gun on Kinski and threatened to shoot him. Some people say there was no gun, some people say the gun wasn't loaded, and some people say there was only a threat made to shoot him by Herzog. But either way, it's become one of the more interesting legends around the making of this film. The film has become highly influential and has inspired several other films. Most notably, the 1979 film Apocalypse Now. Francis Ford Coppola's war film was heavily influenced by Aguirre and tells a similar story of a doomed journey into the heart of the jungle. Aguirre has gone on to develop a cult following around the world and has even appeared on several greatest movie lists. There's nothing I can say here that can communicate what the experience of watching this film is like. This is not a film concerned with story as much as it is concerned with mood. It is a beautiful, baffling, and haunting experience. I encourage you to seek it out. Thanks for listening.